This here is a 3D lighted picture I made where the horizon is lighted with some different colors. It wasn't too complicated to make and it looks pretty cool. And here's how I made it. I had this picture I took of Cloud Peak in Wyoming last summer and I got a metal print of it. In this case it's a 16 inch square print. To make the final piece I had to cut it at the horizon. So after taping around the horizon to protect the picture, I had a metal cutting blade on a jigsaw and just cut on the sky side of the horizon with a little bit of a gap. On the foreground piece now that it was separate, I could cut off some of the chunks to get a little closer to the horizon. To finish up the horizon piece, I just used a file to file it down and I found that the tri triangular file works pretty well. It's okay to cut into the foreground a little bit in this case because it would tend to look like normal terrain anyway. This seems tedious, but it actually didn't take all that long, maybe 20 minutes or so. For the bottom piece, the cut line is hidden, so I just did a little bit of light sanding to keep it from having sharp edges. At this point, the two pieces were done. For the frame, I got some 1x3 board with the plan to route a groove in the middle of the board for the foreground piece to sit. To make the groove, I used this straight router bit that made 8 inch grooves. It's not really meant for making a groove in the end of boards, so a bit like this would have been better, but I had to use what I had. I measured the picture size and subtracted the groove depth on the left and right to determine the inside width of the top and bottom pieces. For the left and right lengths, I overlapped the foreground and background a bit, maybe three quarters of an inch or so, and checked the rough size. I then cut the pieces to length. The top and bottom had to be accurate, but the left and right had some leeway because of the overlap. Next I routed the groove in the bottom and partially up the left and right sides. And then I tested the layout and everything seemed to fit together fine. Next, I stained the pieces for a couple coats and shellacked for a couple coats. Next, the frame had to be glued and clamped with the foreground piece inside. I did this on the floor since two of my clamps are super long. After that, I hammered some wood joiners in the back for good measure. Not sure if this was really needed though. The background piece was attached to the back with some furniture tacks. I also put a little silicone. Uh, on the back to be safe as well. For the LED strip, I used a NeoPixel strip from Adafruit. These are individually addressable LEDs, uh, so you can do a lot of different patterns, um, and it can be cut to any length. So I laid it out along the back and cut it to an appropriate width. For the microcontroller, I used the Metro Mini from Adafruit. In order to determine the current draw, I roughly connected the strip and lit it up. The power supply showed about one third of an amp. This helped me pick the USB power supply later. After desoldering the original wires, I soldered in a three wire ribbon cable. For the power cable, I cut a USB cable. In this case, only the red and black wires are needed. It's important to cut the green and white wire to different lengths so that they're impossible to short. If I ever plug this into a computer, I don't want the data lines to be sorted together. At this point, everything could be soldered together with the 5 volt pin on the board connecting to the USB cable and the LED strip, the grounds connected together on the board as well, and the LED data wire going to pin 6. I tested to make sure it all worked at this point and it was good. Right now the program just gives a random color and also changes every 30 minutes. Though I also programmed it to read the serial port and there's a few commands that can change the color in case I want to connect it to something else in the future. I put the protective sleeving back on the strip so that it can't short to the metal. And then to attach it to the back of the picture, I just used hot glue, which isn't very elegant, but it works fine in this case. Since the overlap is fairly high on the two metal pieces, the position of the strip doesn't really need to be exact. I made sure to glue around the connections as well to make sure the wires can't short to the metal. The microcontroller, I glued a little piece of plastic down first to attach the board to. And at that point, the picture was done. The color glow behind the mountain looks very cool, especially with different colors. Hope you enjoyed this video.